Four prosecutors quitting a case is something that has been described to me as extraordinary by a half a dozen former DOJ and FBI officials I've spoken to since Tuesday night. Just take me through the ground truth of what it's like there right now. So um, just to give you a sense of, of what they went through. Um, so imagine a defendant is facing sentence for having sold 10 pounds of cocaine. And the guidelines and the law and the facts are clear what you're supposed to do, that if it's 10 pounds, you get a certain guideline. And because the person is rich, white, and knows the attorney general and the president of the United States, your boss comes in and says, I'd like you to fudge the facts and the law. Let's, let's pretend it's a pound. Um, that is the difference between the initial memo that went in by career prosecutors and the amended um, submission that was put in that led to four people resigning, which is that they were not going to fudge the facts or the law. So, so, so this sounds like, like an explanation that's more logical to people who live outside DOJ. So they recommended the guidelines. The guidelines are sort of set by the crime that he was convicted of, right? Right. And, and so, the reason... so what they were asked to do was cheat, was, was to corrupt the process. Absolutely. What, the guidelines are there um, so that everybody is treated the same, at least initially. The, the judge has to start with what are the guidelines so that everyone, whether it's you, whether it's me, no matter who we know in the Justice Department, no matter who we know in the White House, we're all initially treated the same. Um, and that's how you have to start. And you don't fudge in any way. The way that prosecutors are trained is the facts are the facts. If there were 10 kilos of drugs, that's what you get that sentenced on. You can't close your eyes and pretend that it's less. You can't pretend the law is anything other than what the law is. And so if you look at the initial memo that was submitted by the prosecutors, they deal with the facts and the law and they set it out straight. And then they also tell the judge, by the way, we understand once you've looked at these guidelines, you have discretion to decide whether it should be higher or lower. They, they point out ways in which the judge would want to go lower. So one thing that's that I know the press has reported a lot on this, which is that the they say that the prosecutors recommended initially a seven to nine year sentence. That's not true. If you look at the actual submission, they say the guidelines initially would call for that. But then they go out of their way to talk about the judge's discretion at that point to consider other factors that would lead to a lower sentence. What they weren't willing to do was to pretend that the facts were different or to pretend that the law was not clear. And so when you look at the, uh, the submission that then went in, I can understand why someone would say, I am not putting my name on that. That is, I'm not going to pretend that this was, you know, one uh, pound of drugs and, and not 10. But three of the prosecutors who quit the case still work in the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C. Their boss is a political appointee who either what? What did their boss do? Did so, he bend to Barr's will or did he have the backs of his four career prosecutors in his office? Well, he clearly didn't have the backs of his, his, his prosecutors. So what, what's be, their day like today? Well, just to be clear, only one of them, the most junior person, is actually still in the D.C. U.S. Attorney's mm -hmm. Office. The other two people went back to their respective offices, mm -hmm. one in Maine Justice, one in Maryland. And one person who was in the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office just up and quit and said, Mr. I can't Kravis. take it. Exactly. And that was a um, statement, as was described to me by a former senior DOJ official. That's saying this is, you know, I was trained early on by Mary Jo White, who's sort of a renowned figure in, in New York. She was had a senior position in, in Brooklyn okay. and in, in Manhattan. Legendary. And she, legendary. Um, and she trained us that, you know what, there is no shame in resigning. If there is something that you are asked to do and you just cannot stomach it, there is just no shame in saying, I, I can't do I it. I want to get to everyone else, but I, I feel like I, I, I don't want to let this go with you. What is happening outside these four career prosecutors who were pushed to the point where they resigned? Are, are other people sort of standing on that line, peering over the edge? I mean, what is the state of tension and despair inside DOJ, if any? Well, it's both within DOJ and also people like me who spent careers at the department who are now outside. I mean, one, I think people are heartbroken. I mean, this is an institution, it's just like what you're hearing about in the State Department, that people are just... You know, emotionally very upset at seeing the rule of law gutted. Um, there is tension, though, as to what do you do? Do you really want everyone who um, to, to quit 
um, who can't stomach this because you don't want a department left without those people who are principled. So there is a debate about what is the right thing to do. And I, I feel terrible for the people put in that situation because they didn't ask to be in that situation. Um, you know, they're, they're victims um, just like the four um, prosecutors who had to take the steps that they did. So I think there are a variety of ways to respond to it. Um, obviously, it's a huge statement, and I can understand the people who say, I I'm, I'm just can't take it and I'm leaving, but not everyone can do that. Robert Costa, you give us some of the why to what Andrew and I are talking about in an, a stunning, a, a remarkable piece of journalism in your paper with your byline on it today. Take me through it. Steve Bannon, in an interview that you cited, said that the president now feels unbound. Uh, the impeachment process is over. He is fully supported by his party as he makes these moves regarding the Department of Justice. People like Senator Romney are rapping him uh, about that decision, but not ready to take decisive action. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell not calling for hearings or an investigation like House Democrats or Senate Democrats. Speaking to Senator Susan Collins yesterday, it was clear that she was not yet ready to call for hearings into any of this. So the president inside the White House, now adding on loyalists like Hope Hicks back onto his staff, feels like he can move forward and test the limits of not only the executive branch and executive power, but the rule of law. And that's a development that is almost universally accepted now within the administration and the Republican Party. Frank Figluzzi, what happens when an entire party from the top all the way down to um, the bottom, and I'd put Donald Trump at the top, and, and William Barr representing sort of the low, dirty underbelly of this operation by being the man actually shoving career prosecutors out the door. What happens when a whole party from the top to the bottom is corrupt on the question of rule of law and its belief in it? It means, it means the guardrails are gone, Nicole. It means the checks and balances that we would expect to be in place have, have been erased. And so the guy who's supposed to be standing for justice, supposed to be representing every American now in the role of attorney general, can no longer be counted on at all. And so, look, um, first, kudos to Andrew who, for clearly explaining that the, the, the departure of these four prosecutors was not about a, a, a snit or de debate about a difference of opinion on a sentencing recommendation. It was about asking them to do something they clearly should not and could not do. So I, I, I want to say this because I, I see a lot of people on social media distraught and frustrated. What do we do now? We need more of this. And I, I've, this is an evolution for me. I've come from saying, hang in there. If you're at DOJ, if you're at the FBI, if you're at State Department, hang in there. Be one of the good guys. I'm now saying that's not going to cut it anymore. And you don't want to be associated with this complete demise of justice and democracy. You need to quit by speaking out when you're asked to do something that's intolerable. We need more of this, not people hanging in and going down with the ship. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.